It's a chitter bug. So how do I interpret the results? Okay. Again, if the null hypothesis must be rejected, then it must be concluded that the difference is due to something other than chance, right? In other words, we believe the two groups really are different, and whatever made the two groups different at the beginning of the study, that's what we call the systematic influence, that's the reason why there's a difference. But if we fail to reject the null hypothesis, in other words, we retain it, we're continuing to believe that there is no difference between the groups. Well, if there is no difference, but we found a difference, where did we find a difference? We found a difference here. This is the mean of the first group, and this is the mean of the second group, and this answer is not zero. So there is a difference. But how do we explain this difference? We explain this difference by saying it is due to chance, right? It's due to normal variability, right? Every day you drive to school, it takes you sometimes longer than others, right? It's only when those differences are really, really extreme that we believe it's due to something other than chance. Something else must really be going on to be causing this difference. Otherwise, when the difference is small, when it's non-significant, we believe that difference is due to chance. All right, how do I know if the test should be one tail or two tail? Well, if the researcher expects that one group is going to have a higher score, or a better score, or a bigger score, right, than the other, then he or she is making a directional research hypothesis. And if she's making, or he's making, a directional research hypothesis, we do a one-tail test, right? We need to know three things to look up the critical value. The first thing we have to decide, is it a one-tail test or a two-tail test? How do I figure it out? Well, is it a directional research hypothesis? Because that would be a one-tail test. But if the researcher doesn't tell you which group is going to score higher, or which one's gonna score lower, or which one's better, or which one's worse, or which one's faster, or which one's gonna take longer, if he or she is looking for any difference, they don't care who's better, then they are making a non-directional research hypothesis they are looking for any difference, and that's when we do a two-tail test. There's our first question, right? There's the first question we have to answer to look up T star, the critical value for T. Right? Okay, let me go to the next slide. For example, there will be a difference between private and public education on SAT scores. So what's my research hypothesis? The average score for the first group, private schools, and the average score for the second group, public schools, are different. I'm not telling you who's bigger, who's better. I'm not telling you which average is going to be greater. So we don't know the direction of the difference. The only thing we know is when I subtract one from the other, right? that the answer can't be zero. Can the answer be positive? Yes. Can the answer be negative? Yes, it just can't be zero. That means my answer can be one of these two possibilities. So I need to do a two-tail test. The answer can be negative or the answer can be positive. It just can't be zero. So the answer can land over here, or the answer can land over here. It can land in one of two places, which is why I do a two-tail test. But if I tell you that private schools will score higher than public schools on the SAT, I'm telling you that the average for the first group will be greater than the average for the second group. So look what happens when I subtract them. If this is really bigger than that, when I subtract this from this, there's only one kind of answer that I can get. 
answers that are greater than zero. The answer can only be here in the positive end of the distribution. How many places do you have to look for your answer? You only have to look for it in one place. You only have to look for it in one end of the distribution. You only have to look for it in one tail. So when you have a directional research hypothesis, you do a one tail test. You only have to look for your answer in one tail, one end, right? That's the first question you gotta ask. Is it a one tail test or a two tail test? That determines which column you're gonna look up the critical value in. The next thing is, what am I gonna use for alpha? Until further notice, 5%. You can always make it smaller than 5% if you have a reason, but you can never make it bigger than 5%. And what's the last thing you need to know? What is your degrees of freedom? You get that answer from the formula. It's the total sample size minus the number of groups. And when we do an independent sample t-test, we have two groups. So it's the total sample size minus two.